here he comes. Picking up speed. He needs 90 plus miles an hour. done it he has the distance the car came down squarely on its tail did the seat absorb all that impact oh they're cheering man he's, he's okay. okay he's okay it never took a solid lick it came down on his tail it rolled incredible that's incredible i can't believe i'm sitting here watching this i can't believe he did it i can't either this in fact he almost cleared the pile of cars he was way past where he thought he was going to end up. Car on its roof. It'll take a little while to get him out of there. Family being informed that he's okay. You got to see the back of that car because that took all the damage. Oh, this is incredible. Look at look at how far that's pushed back right to the rear axle. Oh, they're going to roll it over. Here's the guys. The people that have helped him do this are picking this car up, physically picking this car up and rolling it over. Uh, want, want to buy that Chevelle now? I'll tell you what. This thing looks like a gremlin in the back. Oh. More, like, more like a pacer, the way it's smashed down in the front end of the rim. You can really? see that where he sat in the car with the roll bars and with everything there, that, that whole area is intact. They're just going to have to unpack him now. Just like they packed him in the car, they're going to have to go through the process of unpacking. Obviously, he's talking to us. They're going to have to literally cut him out of the car. Yeah, they're, they're cutting out. These are the window nets that we run yep. in the Winston Cup cars. You see them taking the steering wheel off of it. Uh, you see them cutting everything out. They're going to start moving the paddy now, little by little. You're going to unpack, literally unpack him like you would a set of fine china. There's the back of the car. You see where it came down, right on that left rear corner. You, you see the stuff, you see the smoke from the front. That's basically just the steam from the radiator. That's yep. no big deal. That's just the steam from the radiator. But they've got all this stuff. See where they had weight packed in the back of the car so the car wouldn't nose over. Sure so did. So that it would come down from the tail section. You see the sandbag laying there in the back of the car. A marvelously executed stunt for Spanky Spangler. Here's, uh, here's Ralph. Well, this is his wife, Candy. You must be absolutely relieved at this point. <laughs> what did you think when he went launching through the air? I know it absolutely took my breath. Speechless. I don't know. Wasn't the position I thought he would be. It's really scary. The good news is he's okay. They're going to let us get over here and get a word with him, I think, now. Let's see. There he is. Hey, way to go, record setter. Spanky Spangler, congratulations. I am so happy I get to talk to you. That means you're okay. Tell me about that ride. Well, it's kind of a wild ride because uh, we put a lot of, uh, we kind of waited the back end. And we put a little bit more in this morning, thought uh, the balance of the car might be a little bit better. I think now that we might have put a, much, a little bit too much weight in the rear end, uh, the flight was all right, but normally when I come down, I can see the, the cars I'm crashing into. This time my front end was up and we tail drug into it. The impact was all right until I got over upside down and felt my head into the, the top of here. And it was, uh, it was pretty wild. Did you at any point wonder what am I doing or did it go absolutely the way you pictured it would? Well, it didn't go exactly the way I pictured. You know, I thought I'd bring the nose in more, but I was going to try to pancake it in a little bit more. So we, we put a little bit, uh, we put some weight in the back end. I think we put a little bit too much in and it kind of kind of dropped me back in the, in the rear end. Kind of dropped me in a little bit. Well, now you've set your record. You've gone well over 300 feet. What do you do now? 50 to 360. Well, hey. <laughs> Evil Knievel, you ain't so evil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get another look at it from one more angle here. As you went off the ramp, were you right where you wanted to be? Yeah, um, I, had, I was floating in my car and started uh, getting out on me a little bit, you know. And uh, so I tried to float it in a little bit, tried to stay with my speed. My speedometer was, uh, it was getting up to right around 100 miles an hour, and I was trying to float in around 98. So We spent a lot of time talking about the negative Gs on the impact. You fell some four stories at over 100 miles an hour in a 72 Chevelle. What was that initial impact like? Well, the initial impact, it was pretty good because I came in on the, on the tail. You know, I pancaked in a little bit, and that, that put in all the car on all the crash guards. So that helps a lot instead of coming in on the nose. I figured I'd come in on the nose and then flip over. 
But it worked out real well. Well, your daughter Christy is here to congratulate you on a successful attempt. Your wife is here as well. Can you do me a favor and as we let him get one more, could you do me a favor and try to put into perspective in layman's terms what that impact is like? You say pancaked it in. To me, it looked like one of the most violent things I've ever seen. Well, it's pretty violent. I have to take my hat off to all stunt guys to do this because it's a rough job. And uh, there's just a handful of guys out there really do this kind of work. And it's not for everybody. It's for, I mean, I'm well protected. You've seen I had a crew and all the st safety stuff that I wear. It's a, it's a dangerous job, and I'm just glad it came out. Is this the culmination of an entire career for you? Yeah, I've been doing this a long time, but just to, to launch one this far and just show everybody. I've been around a long time. I've been called the number one stunt man in the world. I'm, I'm not, like, trying to prove that because all the stunt guys are number one to me. I'm just out there trying to do a job. And we got to see it live here on Stunt Mania. Absolutely amazing. The one thing that, Kyle, that I can't believe is this car almost blew over. He almost came down on his roof, and that would have had disastrous consequences. Yeah, that, that would have been very, very bad. That would have been just terrible. Okay, but as you see the car, off, as you see the car, the car takes off. And as you see, like he says, the car is, is comes down, and see, it comes down on the tail. Shoot. This is the how best thing shoot. that could have happened to him. Measure. Because as the car came down, the impact was all on his back, solid on his back. As he sits in a Winston Cup thing, you never get hurt in a Winston Cup car in an accident if you back one in most of the time because you've right. got, it's like having a, a backboard behind you. And so as he came down, it took that blow first. Then the car began to roll and dissipate the energy. And as it dissipated the energy, like he said, he hit his head. But, you know, it's incredible to think that, you know, 10 minutes ago or whatever, this man was, was up in the air, and all of a sudden we're talking to him. Brad, what's the distance? Brian is down here, the official ground crew man with, now the, remember, this is not the official Guinness measurement. This is just to give him a baseline of where to make the official measurement with the survey equipment. It looks to me, gentlemen, like 327 feet, one half inch. 327, one half inch, folks. Unbelievable. Well, Spanky will be able to claim his world record. Uh, of course, there will be an official measurement and a submission to the Guinness Book of World Records. And I got it. Jumping from a ramp to a pile of cars is not a record that at present they officially recognize, but it is one that will be submitted for consideration. Look, he is completely unhurt. There's Ernie. Congratulations. These guys have been inseparable the last day or two, talking to each other, seeing how everything's going. This thing is so windy for me. It's pretty windy, and the wind is starting to cross up a little bit now. If you try to make that jump, I mean, it's going to blow you off this ramp. You're not even going to get half the cross. I, I think it went way too bad. What do you... Hey, you know, the, the, it's just not the right elements for us right now. It's too, too windy. You scared me worse than when the wind was scaring me now. Hey, I'd rather do it and watch it. But <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's yeah. pretty windy, man. I don't know, because you're way up there, and that, that wind's really catching up there really bad. It's not even going straight, it's blowing in twirls and stuff, man. It, I don't know. And it's carrying you. It carried you a lot further than you were supposed to be going, bro. I don't need to go further than that. We have to hit ramp. If we don't hit ramp, I'm, I'm really in trouble. Yeah, there's just too much wind. I don't know, I, but I would, you know. Let's have the final, let's see what the wind does. Give it the last chance. Well, if it stays like this, if you know, like you got this, problems. No, we don't have problems because we'll yeah. just have to do it later. But we will do, do it later. Do, We've been working. This guy, this guy has worked with me. Excuse me, I got to hug this man. This man's worked with me for five years. He is one of the reasons that Stunt Mania 1 has happened. And he could be the reason I'm going to be around for Stunt Mania 2. We're stunt guys. Wind. We're not daredevils. We're stunt guys with calculated risk. And what we're doing out here is we're doing stunts that we know we can do, but we have the elements on our side. We can do them. If we don't, you know, we can't stop anything about this wind. You can see how bad it is. Look at my hair. And that was a world record. No one will touch that record for a long time unless Spanky comes back to do it himself. Won't be me. It might be my boy. Junior. However, Junior. Junior. <laughs> however, this guy right here. But I can't let him do it. Bro, all right. So for right now, we're going to go on to the final round of the monster trucks, the four trucks that have run the final round, and then... Ernie Adams and his crew will have a look at the wind conditions and see if they will permit his making what is already looks to be a death-defying jump. The ramp that Ernie Adams has to go up stands 44 feet high at the top. The span is 150 feet. And looking from our perspective, the top of that ramp is a very narrow 
landing for its first 100 feet, and then it widens out to what is actually the landing zone. Uh, but as Spanky was explaining, now there's the top of the launch ramp. Look at the narrowness of the landing ramp. is only as wide as the launch ramp, and our cameraman's not waving that camera back and forth. That's the wind doing that. So when he gets down to the landing zone down here, the ramp is pretty wide. But if he gets blown off course at the top of that ramp, he does not have a 3,700-pound car and a roll cage surrounding him. So a decision will be made following the final round of the monster trucks on Ernie Adams' jump. But you saw that flag dancing in the breeze and the camera waving as well. If the